Like pretty much every candidate for the presidency who goes on to eventually win, Jeb Bush announced today that he was laying off a significant portion of his staff and massively cutting the salaries of those who remain. In fact, he's cutting staff at his Miami headquarters to save more than $1 million per month and slash payroll by 40% this week. In addition, he's removing some of the senior staff uh, from payroll, asking others to stay on as volunteers, which is rarely a good sign. Um, and he's cutting ties with a number of different uh, consultants, which, considering the problems with his campaign, is probably not the worst idea, even if it doesn't save you money. Um, now, his campaign advisor, under anonymity, one of them, said, This is about winning the race. We're doing it now and making the shifts with confidence. We expect to win. Uh, so I love this in a thousand different ways. Uh, first of all, who's going to stay around as a volunteer because they're so excited about Jeb Bush? They're like, oh, Jeb, exclamation point, I'll yeah. stay as a volunteer <laughs> oh, and Rick, not Rick get Perry. paid for what I was getting paid for last week. Rick, yeah, sure. Rick Perry tried to do the same thing and then eventually, oh, wait. Right, and no one stayed. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, and I love the campaign advisor trying to spin this in a positive way. I know, they have to, it's politics, right? But this is about winning the race. No, this is about you losing the race. You're at 5% in the last poll in Iowa. You're at 5%. Ben Carson's at 28%. I think Jeb yeah. is just waiting for his own national nightmare to end. He's been forced into this position. He mm. just like wants to go and be a rich guy and not have to deal with this. Dad's pushed. It's like, he's like the guy whose dad like said, you're playing football. Get out there and play. And he's like, but dad, I'm a dancer. I want to dance. You know? and, uh, you're playing football. You're fat because you're lazy. Get on the field. <laughs> Your brother made all state. Why didn't you? Um, <laughs> I didn't live that. I didn't live that. Okay, anyway. So <laughs> I feel bad for Jeb. He was always the second brother. George yeah. always got the attention. He was just the chubby kid that they didn't even know how to name correctly. <laughs> why, do I, why do I get Florida? Why can't I have Texas? <laughs> yes, yeah. They gave me they made me governor of Florida, the dumbest state in the union. I'm not I'm not dumb, all right? I'm smart. Not like everybody says, like dumb. I'm smart and I want to be president. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Like everybody expected when he ran. He's he he seemed prior to this campaign to be a somewhat savvy politician. Before he backtracked on most of the, the comments, like with immigration, that we'd given him credit for, he seemed like, you know, he, he has the downside of being an insider from a political dynasty, but he also should have the upside of knowing how to campaign, having an established uh, base of uh, campaign advisor and, and things like that to help him out. But then it's it's not just the, the Donald, Donald Trump stuff. That's certainly hurting. But the 9-11 the stuff, yes. and the, the Bush dynasty, stuff, his responses are so tepid, regardless of whether it's a low energy thing or whatever. He's shown, like with Lincoln Chafee, when you were talking about who would actually elect this guy a uh, dog catcher, hey, he, he's won multiple elections. How did he do it? And he, a lot of people are thinking that it, this has to do with Trump, that he went head to head with Trump too many times and he came out almost always looking bad as a result of it. But again, under anonymity, Bloomberg speaking with campaign uh, advisors of his said, that while recent tangles with Donald Trump have energized the campaign, which seems like an odd take, that's what they say though, Bush's senior team recognized a more fundamental set of changes were required that didn't involve dealing directly with the party's surprising and surprisingly durable frontrunner. So there's fundamental problems and they need to back off from trying to deal with him because they can't. Well, every time they would ask him a question, he has one reaction, which is like, God, when are they going to ask me something I can answer? Yes. Yeah. He always seems like, that's true. Oh, come on. Gosh, you guys. Come on. You're really slogging my galoshes. <laughs> 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 he probably does have galoshes. <laughs> he probably does. Okay, so uh, I, I continue to focus on the language here because I'm uh, deeply amused by it. Then we're going to go to the money, which is also deeply amusing in this case. When the guy said, we're making this shift with confidence. You just fired 40% of your staff, dude. Like, what's the what's the confidence? Uh, I'm, we're downsizing with with great confidence. Whatever you say, right? Mm. And his last exclamation: "We expect to win," is the kind of thing somebody says when they don't expect to win, right? If you're expecting to win, you don't have to be like, you know, we're seriously, we expect <laughs> to win. We do. We do. Uh, by the way, I, I have an idea that I think would just be. I I almost I'm scared to say it because I'm worried that this will get back to him and he'll do it. But right now, if Donald Trump announced that he was raising the salaries of his campaign workers by 40%, oh. he would look amazing. <laughs> oh, don't the give him any ideas. He would have uh, oh. perceived from that. Right. Don't do it, though. So, well, speaking of which, by the way, he said uh, the Bush attacks have energized their campaign. But, uh, I'm sorry, Trump attacks. Trump kept calling you low energy. So, when you say, oh, we're energized, we are, we're energized <laughs> by his attacks. 
You seem so sad. You're responding yeah. to his attacks. And like, no, oh, no, but seriously, seriously, energized. You're all fine. But we're energized. No, no don't do that. Well, one more thing. Uh, there was a last quote here. We're moving our resources into states to ensure that voters in primary and caucus states are introdu introduced to his record and his vision for the future. What the fuck were you doing before? Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, what, what? Yes. I mean, of, of course you should have been in the states focusing on the caucuses. Yes. What were you doing in Miami with a giant, giant staff just sitting there? Yeah. And part of what they were doing is they were milking him. Is he like, oh yeah, of course, Jeb, you're gonna win, man! Exclamation point! Yeah, absolutely. And these vultures, the consultants, come in and they're like, oh, Jeb, you got this stuff on lockdown. You know, I feel you. you kind of high energy today, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, call Iowa. You don't need to go to Iowa. Let's just spend more money in Miami. Yeah. So what I don't understand is if he cut, if he downsized his staff by forty percent, shouldn't his profits go up? <laughs> I mean, next thing he's going to do, nice. they're going to outsource their campaign out to <laughs> India, right? Is that what you normally do if you're if you're losing money, if you're That's bleeding true. money, yeah. you yeah. cut staff, outsource. So I don't know. If and also, so they they said that he's cutting it to save a million dollars at his headquarters to save a million dollars, which means that in that month he spends far more than a million in a month. No, so do I, you have ten thousand employees? How could it cost that much? No, that's amazing. And they're part. not cutting television funding, or they're not. There's so many things that they're not cutting. What is it that they're cutting? So I did the math on that. There's that means on employees alone, the Jeb Bush political campaign is spending two and a half million dollars a month. That's amazing. Wow, two and a half million. This they got. They, look, part of this you should be happy about. The Republican donors give hundreds of millions of dollars to these guys, and and Jeb Bush has literally raised over a hundred million dollars so far in his super PAC as well, right? Uh, and then the ha at least half of it is highway robbery, where the Republican consultants come in and they milk it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get you mm. great TV ads. Oh, strategery, I'm on it, dude, <laughs> right? And then they take all this money and they just skim off the top, skim off the top, and and they go home with pockets full of cash. You think those some bitches are going to stay around and volunteer? No, yes. no, they're moving on to the next campaign. They're moving on to Rubio's campaign. They already left the building. They're getting paid by the other guys. That's how it works.